So last year around this time, we had Team Sky both winning Perry Nice and coming in second in Toronto Adriatico. This year, we got a DNS, two DNFs, and a guy sitting out racing for a couple of weeks while the team tries to figure out his blood values. Lots of theories floating around about this, but I'm going to attribute it to a little thing I like to call, wait for it, Sylvain Chavanel's Revenge. <laughs> Despite the misfortune Team Sky foisted upon the IAM cycling rider, the new Pyrenees course did in fact increase aggression. AG2R's Carlos Betancourt won the overall both through bold escapes and, slightly less daring, bursts of hilltop speed. But the race as a whole still felt a little… off. If I were the ASO, I might knock a day or two off the length of the overall event to reduce the hanging out in the pack time even further, and maybe to also decrease the chances of a GC contender getting crashed out. I'd also strive to make each day's race course a little more unique and maybe try to get more of the climbing on camera. At any rate, the former sprinter's showcase Toronto Adriatico was the main event on the men's side this week, and Tink's... Tink's off Saxos? And Sax off Tinkos, and Tax off Sinksos? At any rate, Tinkoff Saxo's Alberto Contador took it convincingly. It looks like the old Contador is back. Well, not the old, old Contador. He probably wouldn't have needed the Y-Fly gearing or the Paperboy technique, but I don't know, the, like, 2012 Vuelta Contador. Also, I'm not sure why, but race organizers RCS tried to make the Torino Trophy both disco and metal, and pulled it off pretty convincingly. The same cannot be said of the race guide to Milan San Remo, which looks like a cross between Yellow Submarine and the opening credits to Casino Royale. It Except it's a bike race. They must have used the Milan San Remo course planning guys to put that together, but even with this new, even sprint friendlier parkour, I'm still pretty certain it's going to be a nail biter into the final kilometer. Up in Belgium, Milkerec Corsa took place this Wednesday. It's allegedly the first race of the classic season, and though I haven't seen it yet, the race reports and photos make it look pretty rad with a late catch and cobblestone sprint. Plus, Lotto Belasol's Kenny De Hayes won it, which is good because his team didn't do so well in those other races earlier this month that are still somehow not part of the classic season. The Women's World Cup began last weekend, with Bowles Dolman's Lizzie Armistead taking the Ronde van Drenthe. I wasn't able to see if the UCI came through on broadcasting it live for reasons related to the early launch of last week's show, but I do know from the internet that live feeds were available. I was also surprised to learn that the UCI's YouTube channel put up a video recap that wasn't even terrible. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still not how the race was won, but at least as an American viewer, it's really hard to get recaps that aren't two dudes shouting at each other over pictures of random crashes until one rider magically crosses the finish line with his arms in the air to become the winner. The UCI recap gave me a pretty good feel for how things went down, so kudos. On the other hand, feedback for USA Cycling, my own national branch of the UCI, that's gonna be less good. I mean, Steve Johnson, the organization's president, actually, I'm gonna have to diagram this. <clears throat> so, in 2004, Dave Zabriskie allegedly told Steve Johnson that the whole Postal team was doping. I'll label that figure one. In 2006, Johnson remarked after the Landis case that if Zabriskie did drugs, he would kill him. Zabriskie was like, bro, remember two years ago? This exchange, the entirety of it, labeled figure two, was related to Juliet Makor some time ago. I should add here that lines are colored according to the person alleging them. White lines are facts not in dispute. Makor put this story on Velo News a few days ago in a book excerpt. Johnson then denied that any of it was true and chastised Makor for not contacting him prior to publication. Zabriskie has said, well, obviously he denies it, but it still happened, while Makor said that she did indeed contact Johnson, who initially, figure four, denied everything, but then later said he only found out about Postal in 2010 and notified USADA of it at that time, figure three. Now, what you may notice here as you look at this chart is that there are no Johnson-colored lines, because the dude hasn't really said a damn thing, other than to deny that he denied denying anything to McCourt. That he denied denying... denying... Did I do... am I doing this right? The whole thing is especially skeevy, because not seven days ago, Johnson said, and I quote, This whole thing isn't a big deal for Americans. Oh wait, that's from 2005. My bad. The correct quote from last week is, Therefore, I am appealing to any USA Cycling members to come forward. This is your opportunity to take responsibility for our sport and to help it become a sport in which we can have the utmost trust and confidence. Johnson's getting on in years, so I understand it gets a bit soft. Memory, that is. So I sent him that quote in an email, just so he'd remember. Think he'll write back? No. I'm Cosmo Catalano, and that was The Week in Bike. <laughs> Thank you.